You are getting this beat and there is a sample in it that's owned by Universal. Are you gonna have to pay more money later on? Can the producer come and make any problems for you? You are expressly prohibited from engaging in any use of the beat or your new song. One of the videos that we did on this channel recently was discussing the legal dispute between UK rapper Ren and a music producer, Kujo. Ren was basically using a beat. He's alleging the instrumental that he got contained a sample in it that was not clear, that was not authorized. Then Kujo on the other side is claiming that there has been payment stuff. You haven't complied with the agreement. You haven't paid me what I'm owed. And then they kind of went back and forth and you guys alerted me to kind of what was going on. And so I was looking at what's been posted publicly and gave you guys some feedback. So if you want to watch that, check it out. But basically I just, I'm like, look, as a music attorney, I deal with both sides of these you know types of issues where it's the music producer or it's the artist making the claim, but this had to do specifically with a beat that was licensed through BeatStars. Just as a, a side note, I ended up actually talking with both sides, so Cujo as well as Ren, and they might come on the show at some point to have a discussion. And so maybe I'll mediate and see if we can kind of help to get this resolved or at least, you know, listen to what they each have to say and, uh, and kind of go from there. But in the meantime, what I was thinking was that we could review what's basically posted on the website for this company. And let me just you know preface by saying, if you are a music producer who uploads music to this platform, you have to sign, right, by clicking and saying, I agree, the terms of service. And the terms of service is not what we're gonna take a look at. If you want me to specifically review that, leave a comment down below, okay? I, I did generally peek at it today, PS, it's over 80 pages long, <laughs> yeah. So if you want me to do that, let me know. Today, what we're gonna talk about is the license agreement that you as a user, as an artist, that you get when you use this platform and you purchase a license or if you otherwise purchase a song. So as I was scrolling through the website before the show, I was looking at the different options, okay? And just as a representative little sample, uh, I do not know this person, okay? I just literally went to the website and just clicked on something. You can listen, okay? And it talks about the licensing options. Now, depending on what you are looking at, there's different things, right? So you can get the MP3 as well as the Wave. You can get the MP3 and the Wave and the stems. This one's $60, the first one was $30. And just so you, you know, if you guys are a little bit newer watching this, the difference being an MP3 is gonna be a smaller compressed version. And so if you use someone's instrumental that's already an MP3, what can happen is that it's just already compressed. And then when you upload, music to music platforms, they usually compress your music even more. And so basically the music, it just like sounds not super great. So having the wave, generally speaking, is good. Having the stems, generally speaking, is good because then you have more you know control over things. But anyway, so obviously it gets more expensive. So you go up and you go up and then here, you can even for $3,000 buy the exclusive, right? So let's say we don't have $3,000 today, but maybe we have a hundred bucks and we're really digging this song. So let's add to cart. And this is how it works. We're gonna go through, check out. We wanna make sure we look at the contract, which is what this is. All right, so review, license. So this is what it looks like if you just look on the website. And each one of these, as I was going through, does look a little bit different, okay? But some of the, most of the stuff is, is pretty boilerplate and I'll explain. So A, before you buy a beat, please make sure you go to that step and you actually read this license. B, I downloaded one of these and it's the one that I you know, see the most commonly that you guys are getting. So that's the one that we're gonna go through together today. All right, all right. And if you guys are excited, make sure you hit that like button. Let's have our gavel moment. All right, this is a non-exclusive pro unlimited stems plus nine beats contract agreement. The way I just want to frame this is that this is for a license. The majority of you, I want to be clear about this, the majority of you getting something off of this website, you are licensing it. And so the thing you have to keep in mind is what can you do and not do with this? And then also, are you going to have to pay more money later on? Can the producer come and make any problems for you, right? These are the questions that I have when I review this because it's usually not just kind of free and clear. And you're like, oh, I have the beat. I don't have to ever do anything again. There's no restrictions. That's usually not how this works, but that's why I wanted to show you before we started that there are different options 
and those options sometimes are not super clear spelled out where it kind of seems like you're getting something exclusive and it's not. So the difference between exclusive Non-exclusive means if you go and buy the non-exclusive beat, that means I can go and buy it, right? And use it. And John and Jane and a whole lot of people. And sometimes that results in content ID issues. That's a different video, different thing. But in any case, that's what that means. If it is exclusive, that means you're saying, I want to buy this, only me, okay? But it doesn't mean that there aren't already people who are using it too. Look, if you want me to do an exclusive, Agreement, review, we'll talk about that, but for most of you, it's gonna be this non-exclusive one. All right, so in the beginning, it just goes, I've redacted, I've blackened out the names for this particular thing. Obviously it's public, right? So you can publicly preview it just for purposes of this is going on my YouTube channel. I just, I just redacted it. But anyway, as you go through, it goes, look, you are paying the amount that you're agreeing to, right? And that little like checkout, fine. Delivery. Licensor, the producer, agrees to deliver the instrumental, the beat, in, in this case, what I am buying is a wave and MP3, as well as the stems, right? The individual exports of drums and, and, and you know, whatever all comes with it. As it's understood in the music industry, the producer shall use reasonable effort to deliver the beat to me immediately after payment. And I will receive the beat via email to the email address that, that I've provided basically to the producer. And so, you know, what, one of the questions that sometimes comes up is, what if I purchased a beat and now I want like a different thing? And I, maybe I want to, you know, I've, I've, I've had a client reach out about this because um, he does a lot of these. And so he'll be like, I changed my mind. I actually want to buy this. It wasn't even an option on the website, but I want exclusive. I want to buy this. I want to own it. I want like total, you know, just me. And so I go, well, what can we do about this? And sometimes you can just reach out to the producer, right? And so if you can find them and then just ask and see what they say, okay, as like a potential, you know, upsell. But for right now, we're looking at the four corners of this agreement, okay? So what's the term? Please pay attention to this. The term of the agreement shall be 10 years in this case, and the license shall expire after 10 years from the effective date. So when you see a word that has caps like this, that means it's defined somewhere in the agreement. And that's somewhere in this case, looking, looking, looking is right here. So it goes, this was the date that I downloaded this. It goes, this is the effective date. The reason we care about this is because a lot of you will go and get these licenses and you didn't see that. And so then 10 years, long time away, but it will come, right? And so what happens is that if, if this ends up being a huge hit in 10 years, you, you not only need to go and relicense it, but it doesn't say you're going to be able to relicense it for the same price. So I don't love that. Okay. Cause even though it's, it's a long time, what we're trying to do is make music that's ours and that maybe we can sell it later on, right? If it does become a big hit or, you know, if a record label comes along and wants to buy your song that happens if it's, you know, if it's doing well. And so this is a problem because you don't actually own it outright. But in the short term, obviously you have the beat, you can put out music, cool, but just be aware that, you know, at a minimum calendar it, <laughs> use, use a digital calendar so you can go 10 years ahead. You might have to pay more money is basically what I'm saying. Become your own record label, which is literally if you're like, hey, I want to start a record label. Cool. I got you. Understand the entire music business. I want to set up my LLC. So I want to do the marketing. It's a lot. So for example, sync licensing, for example, music marketing, it's significantly cheaper than anything you would ever get from a law firm as far as all the stuff that comes with it. And you want to make six figures from your music career and you want to do this for real. Like I'm going to give you what you need. Here's the you. Sorry, so it goes in consideration for you paying the producer hereby grants you a limited, non exclusive, other people get to use it, non transferable, you can't give it to anybody else, and the right to incorporate, include, or use the beat in preparation of one song. So just one song. To incorporate the instrumental, the beat, into a new piece of music created by you, you may create the new song or instrumental, record your lyrics, incorporate samples, pre-existing instrumental written music. So they're like, look, we want you to be able to make your new song and it's going to be defined as the new song. All right. So we're, we're cool with all that. Now, the license, I think what they're trying to say is license. That's the typo. The license grants you a worldwide non-exclusive license to use the beat as incorporated in the new song in the manner and for purposes especially meant to be given. You acknowledge and agree that any of the rights granted to you in the song pursuant to this agreement are on a non-exclusive basis. So they're just, you know, gi ginormous letters there. It's non-exclusive. We're giving it to other people. I don't think like anyone's confused about that, but they do want to make that clear. And then they give some restrictions. They go, the new song may be used, you know, for promotional purposes, 
okay, related to that one single. But that is where this is going to, and in fact, let me even just show you right here. So it goes, new song may be used for any promotional purposes, including but not limited to a release in a single format for inclusion in a mixtape or free compilation of music bundled together, such as an EP, an album, and or promotional non-monetized digital streaming. I don't love that. Non-monetized digital streaming. What are you guys talking about, right? We're trying to monetize our digital streaming. So then it goes on, you perform the song, you can you know, do it publicly for an unlimited non-profit performance. So this is where I'm already like kind of wrinkling my forehead. So I can publicly perform the song. So we wanna look for for-profit performances, okay? For an unlimited non-profit performance. So I go, it's not totally completely clear. And when I've reviewed these for you guys, this is where I'm just going, I just want to make sure that if you are like performing music and doing what you need to do, there's not going to be a problem. So then, you know, it goes, you can play the song unlimited times on terrestrial and satellite radios. So when you're looking at your particular license agreement, just make sure you're, you're paying attention to that. Because sometimes these agreements will say you can go up to 10,000 streams. As soon as you hit 10,000 streams, well, technically, you now need to go back and pay more money, right? So on the usages, make sure you pay special attention to that. Make sure that you were able to publicly perform this song, okay, without restriction. And then the biggest thing, you know, beyond that that I've caught in these agreements has to do with music videos. So let's see what this one says. So it goes, you may use the new song in a synchronization with unlimited audio visual works no longer than five minutes in length. Okay, that's great. So a video goes unlimited. In the event that the new song itself is longer than five minutes, the video may not play longer than the length of the new song. So where, where sometimes they get you is that on the smaller licenses where it might be like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, it will say that you cannot use the song for synchronization, which means you cannot put it in a video, <laughs> which for me is just like, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? As an artist, I'm going to put my music in a music video. I'll put it into content for social media. Uh, so, so again, that's why we're paying special attention to this. This particular license was like a $200 license. So I was expecting to have kind of the premium. I get to use it for my music video. I get to use it for live performances and unlimited, you know, amount of streams and downloads, which is what it generally is saying. All right. So then it goes the a uh, licensee may make the new song available for sale, okay, in, in digital forms to sell unlimited downloads, unlimited audio streams. So this is all good. These are the kinds of words we're looking for, okay? Now, we're going down to the restrictions. The licensee, so you hereby agree and acknowledge that you are expressly prohibited from engaging in any use of the beat or your new song for purposes of, and then here's a list. It goes... Uh, the right, you know, to transfer the license to someone else. And, you know, again, where I get back to, I just need you guys kind of thinking through what you're trying to do with your music. Because if, pursuant to this, you can't transfer it to someone else, that's a problem. If you go and outright sell your song, then the instrumental that is with the song doesn't carry. One of the things with like Ren's situation and Cujo is that they were talking about on their public posting that there was a dispute over the sample. Uh, there was also a dispute about publishing that allegedly had been given. And so we'll see if that's something that's in the kind of the standard template. But, you know, if there was language that maybe Ren wasn't aware of, and then he's like surprised about it, that's why we, we have to read through these. And just to be like, look, if we are an independent artist, and then our video, I think it, you know, you guys, the fans were telling me that the video got over a million plays or a couple million plays. It was doing really, really well. And, and now there's a, a, a copyright strike on it because <laughs> the producer saying there was a violation of the actual contract. All right, so this particular license, we also shall not synchronize. Well, that doesn't work. The license shall not synchronize. Let's keep reading. Maybe I'm jumping to a conclusion or permit third parties to synchronize the beat or new song with any audiovisual work except as expressly provided for, okay. So you can only do it for one video. Oh, that's interesting. So guys, this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is my frustration because I'm like, this agreement already conflicts with itself. It said we had unlimited, you know, abilities to use it for the syncing, but now it's saying we can just do it for one video. So, you know, do I have a problem with that for 200 bucks? Yeah. Like, do I want to do a visualizer? Do I want to do a lyric video? Do I want then, you know, and then do a big music video? 
So pay attention to that. Remember I was telling you about the whole, like, if the word is defined. So let's go back where it was saying, so it's defined as one video no longer than five minutes. So does that include social media? What about all my social media content? So do you see what I'm saying? It's not super detailed as to address all of the uses because technically you're going to put your song to like a whole bunch of videos. I think what they mean is probably a YouTube video. Okay. Sorry. Let me, I, I think I wasn't showing you guys when I just went up. So right here, it goes to show me no longer than five minutes of video. Okay. So let's keep going. The licensee shall not have the right to license or sub license the new song or the beat in whole or in part. You cannot sample. Okay. Licensee shall not engage in any unlawful copying, streaming, selling, lending, renting, downloading, peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So this is a, you know, no, no, no fake plays. The licensee is prohibited from registering the beat. All right. So this is what you're supposed to do. If this is not exclusive, it's telling you, do not register the song for content ID. And you go, hey, this is my song. And it's, you know, so content ID on YouTube. Now, when someone else who's also using the beat uploads their song, they're like, you're ripping off Miss Crystal's song. And you're like, no, I'm not. I just use the same instrumental. So you're not supposed to. Um, I think some people don't know and or they don't read it. So this is where a problem happens or even it wasn't you. You uploaded your song. You didn't claim content ID, but then you get flagged for copyright infringement because someone else did. All right, we're making headway. And then it gets into all the stuff with the ownership. OK, so it's like. The original producer owns the beat under copyright law. You don't, you know, and then it goes, this is the part with like Ren's situation I was curious about. So in this one, it goes with respect to publishing. The ownership of the underlying composition embodied in your new song, you, the producer, both acknowledge that the underlying composition, so related to your publishing, shall be split as followed. So let's pretend, you know, this was like 60-40, okay? Again, this contract is killing me because it says, Licensor, licensee, but it's actually like put out the name because it's a template. So it should just say licensor, licensee. But it goes, the producer shall own and control a certain percentage of the publisher share. So I think this is probably what Ren ran into. So let's pretend it was, it was you know, 60-40. If Kujo was supposed to be getting 60% of the publishing and Ren was getting 40% of the publishing, and then now there's this third party who's like, hey, your song has my sample in it and you didn't clear it with me. Well, guess what? Now they're actually having to do a whole new agreement. But when you go to register on a performance rights organization, which is how this all works. So if you're in the United States, it would be BMI or ASCAP. Where it gets confusing is that on BMI, BMI has a publisher total pool of 200%. And then versus ASCAP, which does the same thing, you can be on either platform. ASCAP has a total pool of 100%. The reason is because the way that we look at this for publishing is that half of it is the publisher share and half of it's the writer's share. And BMI, in its, all its wisdom, it's like, we're going to treat this as 200%. So there's 100% publisher share and 100% of the writer's share. ASCAP, on the other hand, was like, no, 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 we're just going to treat this as 100%, so half is publisher, half is writer. It actually is the same thing. You have to do different math, but it actually is the same thing when you go to register. Does that make sense? So if you're doing it over here on the 200, now you have to double it. If it was 60 and 40, or if it was 50 and 50, 50 and 50 becomes now 100 and 100. I hope maybe that helped just a tiny bit, but this is where mistakes happen. So it's like, do we have a super clear agreement? What are all the problems in the agreement? And then do people then go and like make mistakes because maybe they go and like register something and it wasn't even them, right? So maybe it was like someone on your team who went to register and they put in the wrong percentages and now you're in breach of contract. All right. So just going through, it just goes, you know, mechanical license, uh, talks about the crediting. You have to make sure to credit the producer. Uh, there are options, right? So you have the option to terminate the agreement at any time, three years of the day of the agreement upon written notice, what happens with breaches. So it's not, you know, this, this total thing is five pages long. And it talks about if there's a lawsuit, where do you go? How does it work? But, and let me see if I can find it. You acknowledge and agree that you've read this agreement. You have an opportunity. This is usually that you've had an opportunity to go and seek legal counsel. But you know, one of the things that just horrified me for one of the agreements that I downloaded, and this was for one of the non-exclusive for like a $30 beat. And what totally horrified me is that, you know, it said that you were getting it as is. Okay, so meaning, the producer made no warranty that the beat was cleared, that it was sample free. And I don't know if that's what happened in Ren's situation, if there was that language, but 
that's not good. If you are, are getting this beat and there is a sample in it that's owned by Universal, and now you have Universal breathing down your neck, and we saw an, this happen to an artist. His song went super viral, and it was actually a Universal that came after him. And then he ended up not responding, and they didn't come to an agreement, all the stuff, and Universal sued him. And they ended up got, getting like a multi-million dollar judgment against him. So it can be actually pretty scary. And so that's why I wanted to focus on the non-exclusive because that's the one that you guys are using. The biggest things, okay, so let's, let's, let's recap really fast when you look at these. Please consider, is it exclusive or non-exclusive? How long is it for? All right, is there a limited term on it, such as 10 years? Are you gonna have to come back and get it again, pay more money? Does it say that you are taking the song as is? It uses those words, as is. So meaning if there is a sample, you have to deal with it rather than the producer who made you the song. And then also look at it, are there restrictions on it? Can you use it for your videos? Or do you have to go get another license? So these are the things that come up specifically with platforms like these that I have seen and helped you guys through. Oh, if you found this helpful, please give this video a big like and drop your questions down below.